Changing from electric start to manual start wasn't a five minute job, but it's not just a starter motor that weight can be reduced from. The battery weighs six kilograms and can now be much smaller and lighter, but as usual, there's a complication. The battery provides ballast to the tilting head. Removing this ballast will reintroduce a problem I solved in videos learning to fly three and four. I could have a smaller battery, but bring it further forward in order to still provide the head balancing ballast. There are two other options and one of them is quite interesting. Instead of the ballast, I could bring the fore and aft tilting hinges forward relative to the mast. At the moment, the mast and hinge are aligned. This will do the same thing as ballast by creating a forward tilting torque on the rotor disc. This will compensate for the ballast removal, but only in the air. On the ground, the tilting head will be aft heavy and quite significantly. Here is the interesting part to this. I expect some of you will have heard of something called rotor flatback. This was first pointed out to me a few videos ago by a viewer when I showed how the tail of the helicopter repeatedly dipped downward. You can see it in this video and a few others and I can now understand how rotor flatback can cause this to happen. Here is my understanding of it. When the rotor system encounters an oncoming gust of wind, the advancing blade experiences more lift than the retreating blade. But instead of the rotor tilting to one side like you might expect, it tilts around 90 degrees later due to aerodynamic precession and therefore backwards. With a coaxial and counter-rotating blades, the result is the same on both rotors. They both tilt backwards together. Helicopter pilots are fully aware of having to push forward on the cyclic during an oncoming gust of wind or transitioning into forward flight. If I chose to move these hinges relative to the mast, then rotor flatback would be reduced. As a wind gust increases lift, there would also be an increase in forward rotor tilt, automatically cancelling rotor flatback. The benefit of hinge offset is nothing new and is extensively used in gyrocopters. It was also used on Eagle Benson's Little Zipster, the B9 coaxial helicopter. The Little Zipster was last flown in the 1950s and it is the only example I know of that successfully drove the rotors by an external plunging tilting jack shaft like mine. I'm tempted by the offset hinge modification and it wouldn't be that hard to implement. Option two is fairly simple, just add springs, but the springs would need to be placed so that it can't tilt the airframe, giving an apparent CG issue. You may think that this is a lot of hassle just to reduce a few kilograms in weight, but every effort needs to be made when building a flying machine. The more weight I reduce, the more weight that can be added to aid cooling the engine. This could be another radiator, another fan, or probably a belt driven fan requiring a few horsepower to provide enough CFM through the radiator. I just want to elaborate on the head balance problem and its effects as I don't think I explained it very well in the earlier videos. So here I have the helicopter hanging from the mast and I've weighted the front so the fuselage is level. The mast is also very near vertical. If I remove the battery ballast, now the head tilts backwards by nearly a degree. If I counteract this one degree mass tilt using the cyclic, the fuselage tilts aft. The reason it does this is due to where the control rods push from. If they were pushing from the hinge bolt, then no pitching moment would occur. I hope that clears things up, but it might just add to the confusion. While I'm here, I'll just check the current CG after my modifications. Tail heavy by one degree. That means I can remove my one kilogram nose weight. Super. After the recent modifications, I'm currently 2.7 kilograms lighter than before, but there are loads of other places to lose weight. The center frame is three millimeter wall. Changing this to 1.6 wall would lose another 2.5 kilograms. The engine mounting bar is also three millimeter wall and can be carbon fiber. The battery can be smaller, and the extended poles add nearly eight kilograms. Even myself in already exceptional physical condition could lose five kilograms. But the piece de resistance is if I reduce this drive pulley by just two teeth, 
I would gain 5 to 10 horsepower and that would equate to a minimum of 27 kilograms in extra lift. However, there are a few worries going this route which I won't go into now. It was pointed out to me that the long poles attached to my skids could cause stability issues. By moving them around I can feel what they are referring to. For the next test I'm going to reduce them in length to lessen this issue, perhaps only by a metre to begin with. One last thing, this machine does not have a name and it's high time it had one. I would quite like to include my surname which is Dixie. I thought the Dixie Dragonfly would have been good but there are loads of helicopters called the Dragonfly. I also thought of the Dixie Dodo but it seemed a bit harsh on the machine to call it after a stupid flightless bird. If anyone has any suggestions, please put it in the comments. By the way, I'm fully aware this is how the name Boaty McBoatface came along.